Hello, Reverend Lindy here. It's so good to be with you on this Palm Sunday, a day when ordinarily we would be taking a hold of our palm crosses that we'd have been given especially for the day. We've been taking a hold of them and remembering the cross, remembering that at the beginning of this week that Jesus was heading towards the cross. It's a day when we celebrate the triumphal entry, his triumphal entry into Jerusalem. A day when the people were throwing down their palm branches and waving them as well as he went past and shouting Hosanna in the highest. Glory um, to the King of Kings. They were exalting him but just days later they would have been maybe in the crowd who were shouting out crucify him crucify him hello parch lindisima my morda i fod gyda chi lle bynnag y bo ar sil palmoedd hwn dyw'r nod pan fyddwn yn cofio mynediad byddigol ieithus iesu i mewn i Jerusalem ac wrth iddo nesau ei groes heiliad ar ddydd gwener y groglith. Byddai rhai o bydd a oedd yn canu hosanna i frenin brenhyn oedd yn gweiddi allan yn ddiweddarach croeshoi o fe cyn peilad. A time of mixed emotions a time when we're thinking of the cross but as well we're looking towards resurrection sunday when we'll be celebrating that jesus is alive with us for always so as we come into this day let's pray together father god thank you for the cross thank you for what you accomplished at the cross Thank you for giving up your only begotten Son to die for us so that we can be restored to you. We rejoice in you today. We rejoice in you in the midst of affliction, remembering that you are the one who was and is and is to come, the eternal God, the one who loves us beyond measure. We come to worship you the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Amen. I want to just read one verse of scripture and then we'll sing together. Um, then sings my soul, our Saviour God to thee, how great thou art. But first, Romans chapter 8, verse 31. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also with him graciously give us all things? Rveniaid oith Adnod tridegin a tridegdai Felly, beth mae hyn yn ei olygu? Os ydy dyw ar ein hochr ni, stym ot pwy sy'n ein herbyn ni? Gwnaeth dyw ddim hyd yn oed arbed ei fab ei hun? Rhoddodd e'n aberth i farw yn ein lle ni i gyd. Felly, oes yna unrhyw beth dydy e ddim yn fodlon ei roi in me. How great thou art, O oh God. Let's sing God's praises now. O oh Lord my God, when I in awesome
Philippians chapter 2 verses 5 through to 11. I'm going to be reading it in Welsh. You can follow on in English if you need to do so. Adnodai pimp i un ar ddeg. Dylai eich agwedd chi fod yr un fath ag adwedd y mesaia iesu. Roedd yn rhan i'r un natur a hadiw. Heb angen ceisio gwneud ei hun yn gydradd adiw, ond dywysodd rhoi ei hun yn llwyr i wasanaethu arall, a gwneud ei hun yn geithwas, a dod aton ni fel person dynol. Roedd yn amlwg i bawb ei fod yn ddyn, yna diraddio ei hun hun fwy feth. A bod yn ei fed, hyd yn oed i farw, ie, yeah, drwy gael ei ddianyddio ar y groes. Fel dyma diw yn ei ddyrchafu i'r safle uchaf, a rhoi'r enw pwysica 
in iddo. Bydd pob glin yn plygu i enw Iesu, pawb yn y nefoedd ar y ddeiar a than y ddeiar. A, bawb, a bydd pawb yn cydnabod mae Iesu Grist ydy'r arglwydd ac yn rhoi clod i ddiw y tad. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now we come to our Gospel reading. Listen to the Gospel of Christ according to St Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Today's reading is from Matthew chapter 26 and it's verses 14 through to 30. Then one of the twelve, whose name was Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priests and said, What will you give me if I deliver him over to you? And they paid him thirty pieces of silver. And from that moment on he sought an opportunity to, to betray him. Now on the first day of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus, saying, Where will you have us prepare for you to eat the Passover? He said, Go into the city to a certain man and say to him, The teacher says, My time is at hand. I will keep the Passover at your house with my disciples. And the disciples did as Jesus had directed them, and they prepared the Passover. When it was evening, he reclined at table with the twelve. And as they were eating, he said, Truly, I say to you, one of you will betray me. And they were very sorrowful and began to say to him one after the other, Is it I, Lord? He answered, He who has dipped his hand in the dish with me will betray me. The Son of Man goes as it is written of him. But woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that man if he had not been born. Judas, who would betray him, answered, Is it I, Rabbi? He said to him, You have said so. Now as they were eating, Jesus took bread, and after blessing it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat. This is my body. And he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will not drink again of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. This passage about the Passover, or Pesach in Hebrew, comes after Jesus has made his triumphal entry into Jerusalem. He is there, as are we don't know how many thousands of others, to celebrate the Passover. But this will be a Passover to change history. For this is where Jesus instigates the Eucharist, or Holy Communion, as we practice it in our churches even up to this day or it would be if we were able to meet. The time will come. The Passover meal that Jesus shared with his disciples that we know as the Last Supper has been translated into pictures, most famously by Leonardo da Vinci, and depicts the disciples sitting at a long table, eating together, chatting and jostling for position, and taken from this picture are sculptural altars in churches the world over. It probably wouldn't have looked anything like this though. The tableau was an artistic license used so as not to show the back of anyone. As the disciples gathered around the table to celebrate the Passover, 
Jesus's journey to the cross shifts up a gear. Two days before this, Judas Iscariot had gone to the chief priests and sold Jesus out to them for the price of 30 pieces of silver, an assassin's price. Not that Judas was being given the money to go out and take a pop at Jesus himself, but he was being made responsible for selling Jesus out to the authorities. Was Judas solely responsible? Just him? When he dipped his matzo in the cup, there was a coming into agreement with the devil to bring the Son of God to the cross. But this was the Father's will. Remember Gethsemane, where Jesus asks the Father to perhaps take this cup away from him? And he says there, but not my will, but yours be done. This was the Father's will. This is what the prophet Isaiah had spoken about. This was the process that God had put in place to bring his children back to a place of worship, to a place of knowing him, being in relationship with him, which is what he created us to be before the fall spoiled all of that. The devil thought that he'd won another victory. Ah, oh, but I'm going ahead of myself to what I like to call Resurrection Sunday. The victory belongs to the Lord. <laughs> next week, next Sunday, we will be celebrating that victory over the cross, over the grave, over death itself. What does it mean to us today to live in the victory that Jesus won over the grave? You see, Judas wasn't alone in bringing Jesus to the cross. I was there. You were there. Obviously not physically there. But my sin, your sin, was what Jesus carried on himself at the cross. He died for it, with it, with the weight of it on his shoulders. It's an unfathomable mystery that the Son of God would take upon himself the sins of the whole world for all, not just alive then, but now and in the future, so that we don't have to take the punishment that is due to us because of our rebellion against our Father in heaven. You may be watching this and thinking and asking, how have I rebelled against God? I don't even know that there is a God, let alone one who cares about me, let alone one who would die for me. Just look at COVID-19, people dying, suffering, when they haven't done anything to deserve it. Jesus was the only person who has ever lived, who did absolutely nothing wrong. Now I'm not saying at all that the people who contract this virus have done something wrong. This is not a punishment sent from God. I'm going to say that again. This is not a punishment sent from God. If you hear anybody saying that, then I'm telling you now, it is a lie. But God can and will change the course of history through it. Already we're seeing change. Already we're seeing people being appreciated for the service that they're giving to us. We go out there at eight o'clock at night 
I think it should be every day, actually. And we applaud those who are giving selflessly of themselves to keep us safe. Things are changing and will continue to do so as the months, months roll by. Jesus was totally innocent, as are those who have died. He always obeyed the Father, his Father, our Father in heaven. He only came against the authorities to tell them that they were coming against God. How often do we come against the authorities for a much lesser reason? Maybe to meet with our mates in the car park when we think nobody else can see us. But God can. And your consciences can as well. Jesus was obedient even to death on the cross as we've heard in our reading from Philippians chapter 2. He was innocent and obedient. I would love that I could say that of myself, but sadly I can't. Can you? When we are born again of the Spirit of God, which is what makes us Christians. Not being good people, that doesn't make us Christians. It's being born of the spirit of the living God. We share not only in his resurrection, but in his suffering also, as he shares in ours. He weeps as we weep. Jesus left the glories of heaven to come into our space, our time, to set us free from the pain of death. He is present in our suffering. He's there in the hospitals with those who are dying with this with his hands outstretched towards them as christians let us pray that he will be seen and acknowledged as the one who has conquered death and risen from the grave so that those who suffer or die in this pandemic may take hold of his hands enter into his glory and no everlasting life in him, even beyond the grave. As we, as the Christian community of believers, prepare for Good Friday, when we look to the cross and Jesus suffering there, and then beyond Good Friday to Resurrection Sunday, let us be mindful and prayerful of those who are sick with the virus, for those who are tending the sick, the teachers who are looking after the children of the key workers at a huge cost to themselves and to their families. Let's keep in our prayers those who are keeping the food supply chain going, stocking the shelves, serving customers, delivery drivers. Let's pray protection over maintenance workers, postmen, office workers, the clever IT bods who enable and maintain the internet connections. There are unsung heroes who keep our country going, who we may not even have noticed in normal life. God sees them. And we thank him for them as we applaud them personally for what they do. But at the same time, we need, at this time especially in our history, 
to keep our eyes fixed on Jesus because our life is made complete in him the one who was and is and is to come who never changes whose love for his creation is always constant fix our eyes on him for he is the one who holds us in his hands. This coming week I'll be posting short videos of readings and prayers that we can pray together as we follow the route to Calvary. Look out for these on YouTube and Facebook every day. From what I have understood though, I can't go live on YouTube until I have a hundred followers. Correct me if I'm wrong, but crazy isn't it? Jesus changed the world with just 72. But please go on YouTube and follow so that I can learn even more skills by next Sunday and hopefully go live there also. For now, would you join me as I pray? Father, we bring before you this nation of Wales, the UK, Europe and the world. We thank you that we are able to release our control to you, almighty God. Where we don't have the answers or the ability, we know that you do and that you've put people in place across the world who are able. And we ask for your wisdom, your strength, power and authority to override human efforts. We ask for miracles, Lord God. It's at this time that we know that in our weakness, you are strong. And so we put our trust in you, God. We turn our eyes upon Jesus. We look full in his wonderful face and the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Amen. Turn your eyes upon Jesus, look full in his wonderful face, and the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Turn your eyes upon Jesus, look full in his wonderful face, and the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. We turn our eyes upon you, Lord, look full in your wonderful face, and the things of earth have grown strangely dim in the light of your glory and grace. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your heart that has enfolded us in this time. 
Thank you that you are our joy and our soul and our salvation. We praise you. We worship you with all that is within us. We praise you. Hosanna in the highest. Amen. Bethed i ddiwr gobaith, eich llenwi a phob llawenydd a thang nefedd. Wrth gredu, fel trwy nerth ar ysbryd glân, a llenwi'r chwi a gobaith. May God the Father, into whose hands our Lord committed his spirit, give you grace to trust him in life and death. Amen. And may Christ, who on the cross forgave the penitent thief, heal you by his wounds. Amen. And may the Holy Spirit, who prays within us with sighs too deep for words, support and strengthen you as you follow the way of the cross. Amen. And now a blessing. I bless you in the name of Jesus, that the Father may bless you with all peace and strength, fortitude in this time. That you may know the riches of his love. That you may know him strengthening you in the core of your being as you set your eyes on him. I bless you in the name of Jesus that the Father may bless you with the fullness of his Holy Spirit that you will glow as a light that shines in the darkness and that people will be drawn to Jesus through your love and your faith. <laughs>